Well, right now I am in one of my favorite places. We are walking the Gettysburg battlefield and I'm currently standing at probably one of the most visited spots on the battlefield. Uh, this is the, the high water mark close to the Copes of Trees, where on the third day of the battle, Robert E. Lee and the Army of Northern Virginia made a charge right up to the center of the Union line in something that is known as Pickett's Charge. And there was several men who distinguished themselves on, on that day, one of whom was a lieutenant who was in command of this battery right here named Alonzo Cushing. So like I said, we are at the high water mark on the Gettysburg battlefield. And on the, the third day of the battle, Pickett's Charge was preceded by the largest artillery bombardment in the history of the Western Hemisphere. And manning the guns right here at, at this battery was First Lieutenant Alonzo Cushing. He was the commander of Battery A of the 4th U.S. Artillery. and what he and his men endured here in this very spot is is just beyond comprehension from right here we are facing west towards the confederate lines and like i said on the third day of the battle you would have had the the army of northern virginia over here on this other ridge and would have uh, had the artillery bombardment of the union lines followed by a charge of the divisions of Pickett, Pettigrew, and Trimble towards these lines. And, and you can just imagine the men of this artillery battery standing right here. And they have a monument to the commander of Battery A, uh, again, Alonzo Cushing. Uh, this is a guy who had courage beyond what most people can ever imagine another human being having. Uh, so as Cushing and his men are manning this battery, well, there is shell fire that is going off all around them. Uh, Cushing was wounded in the shoulder by a shell fragment and still continued to man the guns here and command his men. Uh, he was then hit low in the abdomen and there are accounts that say that, that he was walking up and down the line here and with one hand was literally holding his guts in. And then as the Confederates are advancing on this position, well, he gets struck by a bullet uh, right in the mouth, goes out the back of his head and, and kills him. Uh, but for his actions here on July the 3rd of 1863, he would posthumously be awarded the Medal of Honor. Now, of course, Alonzo Cushing wouldn't be the only one who was killed or wounded here in this spot. There was another man who was wounded right alongside Cushing during this part of the battle. And we have a pretty darn fascinating artifact from the Gettysburg Museum of History that we've brought out to this very location today. So we're standing near the angle, the bloody angle in the Gettysburg battlefield. The co famous Cops of Trees is in my eyesight. And we are at uh, Cushing's Battery, or the position of Cushing's Battery, where on July 3rd, 1863, they withheld the Confederate attack. And uh, Alonzo Cushing, the commander of this battery, eventually received the Medal of Honor for gallantry here. And he just got that medal just a few years ago. But I want to show you um, a really interesting artifact. I've never brought it out to the battlefield before. And um, it's, it's a photograph of one of Cushing's men. Um, his name was Charles Sprague, Sprague. 
and um, he was one of the gunners in Cushing's battery. According to the family, he was on the same gun as Cushing, but we don't really know that. There's no real account. That's just family lore. But he was certainly on one of their guns, and um, by his photograph is a Confederate musket ball, and that Confederate musket ball, as as uh, as pristine as it is, it actually hit his arm. It hit the fleshy part of his arm, and. Uh, Charles Sprague eventually developed an infection in that wound. He ling lingered in the hospital for quite a while and they eventually amputated his arm. But the doctor gave him the musket ball that they first took out of his, his arm. And, um, you know, people, so called internet ballistics uh, experts, have said, oh, that's not possible, it's not deformed. Well, it's smashed on the other side where it's glued down. But you know, musket balls don't have the kind of velocity that mini balls do. And it, I mean, the shot could have been taken from 100 yards away. We don't know. But it was certainly saved by him. And, it, and it, according to him, it was the one that took his arm. I see no other reason to save it other than that. Um, and also, there's his discharge in, in this display. And um, this was actually donated to the museum, oh my gosh, about 10 years ago, I guess. And um, and the, it came directly from the family. We were really happy to get it. And I didn't do the negotiations for this. You know, I, I don't answer all the emails or, or any of that. And um, Cheryl at the museum actually talked to the family via email. And I wasn't, you know, she had said stuff's coming in. And it just seemed like it was a normal donation. But then when I got it and I saw what unit he was in, that got my attention right away because you know usually with artillery guys um, you know there isn't as much action or combat you know they're kind of in the background sometimes but with Cushing's battery they were right at the front of the hornet's nest I mean they they took a lot of casualties and there was a lot of combat here and uh, we're really happy to have this in our collection it's a really interesting artifact and you know right from the Battle of Gettysburg and it came right from the family All right, so that's a little bit on Alonzo Cushing and the 4th U.S. Artillery right here at the Gettysburg Battlefield. Something else that's kind of interesting is that Cushing would be buried at West Point Cemetery and he would be buried right next to another hero from the Battle of Gettysburg, John Buford, whose cavalry held off the Confederates on the, the first day of the battle. But anyway, uh, that was a, a very interesting artifact right here on the Gettysburg Battlefield.